Now we're going to talk about idiot lights. Well, service engine soon lights, yellow ones, and red lights. Red lights are bad. Red lights mean you have no oil pressure. It means <laughs> that's bad. Just pull over right away. They mean your car is overheating. Pull over right away. Or they mean your alternator belt is broke or your water pump belt or your alternator has quit working. Well, you might have to pull over fairly soon with one of those. So do not ignore red lights. Yellow lights are warning lights. They're not emergencies. They mean that the computer on the engine is sensing something isn't quite right or a sensor went bad. Well, most of the sensors on your engine have to do with emissions and stuff like that. So it's just going to affect your fuel economy and your emissions, but not hurt your motor. If a yellow light does come on, just check your radiator for f how full it is, check your antifreeze overflow bottle, check your oil level, check your transmission level, check your belts, check that they're tight and in good condition and that they're all on. If uh, everything looks fine, well, you've got a long time maybe you can still drive it around before you might want to get someone to run it through a diagnostics. If you've got a vehicle newer than 1996, it likely has the OBD2 code reading system in it. Well, <laughs> it's not like the older cars when you could just get a book and turn the key on three times or jump a wire. But it is much simpler and nicer to use if you have one of these devices. On pre-1996 vehicles, you have to have one of these books. There's the GM style where you find this little clip under the hood and those two wires on the upper right hand corner are those two pins. You jump it with any piece of wire, you don't get a shock and that starts your code reading system working. Then your service engine light will come on when you turn the key on and do that and it'll start flashing like Morse code at you. Chrysler's, you just turn the key off and on three times without starting it on the older vehicles and the code reading light will start flashing. Hondas, you have to pull up the carpet on the floor, look for the computer, and they have a little window on the computer with a little red flashing LED. In these newer vehicles, you just find the connector to plug it in. It's very often under the dash and not always on the driver's side. Then you turn your key on without starting it. And you wait for this machine to read your codes. Then it'll tell you what's wrong. And if you've repaired the problem or changed the sensor, you can clear the code too. So this one says there's no codes presently stored in the computer, which means my little light on the dash isn't on and my car is running fine. On many modern vehicles, they have sensors on the evaporative, it's hard to say, on the evaporative emission system. Well, that has to do with gasoline fumes. So that light on your dash can even come on if you didn't put your gas cap on tight enough. This handy little device will almost always tell you if you have a bad oxygen sensor. Problem is, vehicles can have one, two, three, or four oxygen sensors, and sometimes it can't tell you which one is bad, and they're so expensive you're not sure which one to change. <laughs> that sucks. I paid $85 for this device at Canadian Tire on sale. You can get them online as cheap as $39 $49 if you want. Other than your oxygen sensor causing this problem that your engine runs bad at idle but runs pretty good while you're driving, the next thing you check, which is the easiest, is vacuum hoses. You just start wiggling them and looking for cracks forming, stuff like that. Sometimes you can't find the other end, so then you pinch them with needle nose vice grips or pliers and see if it makes it run better. Sometimes, even your big brake booster, which is a big vacuum diaphragm inside that metal housing, gets a crack in the rubber and you're losing vacuum from the hose that feeds your power brake booster. So your engine changes a lot when you push your brake. It might start running better <laughs> when you're pushing your brake or running worse. The way you test to see if your brake booster is leaking vacuum and causing your motor to run bad is you just pinch the hose going to it or remove the hose put your finger on that hole while it's running and see if it runs better then. Your code reader may be telling you you have a sensor malfunctioning but actually the sensor is good it's just the hose running to it. MAP sensors is very critical that their vacuum hose is in perfect condition. If your car always seems to just start up and run perfect but then when you want to accelerate hard or drive at highway speeds it just doesn't have any power and doesn't seem to want to go over a certain speed 
that can be a clogged catalytic converter. One way to tell if the catalytic converter is clogged is to open up the top of the air cleaner or take off the air input tube to the intake manifold then put the car in drive with your foot on the brake have someone stand beside the vehicle and you listen while the cars say at 2500 rpm in drive while you're trying to accelerate hard with the brake on and listen for a, the sound coming out of the intake opening where the throttle body is the normal correct sound is just a strong <laughs> sucking sound the incorrect sound is a wah sound on some vehicles, it even looks like fuel spraying out the wrong way. <laughs> Little sprays of it. That means you have a clogged catalytic converter or something shoved up your exhaust or a pinched exhaust. Engines have up to three temperature sensors on them. One for the idiot light on your dash or the gauge. One that tells your cooling fans to come on when the car is running too hot. And the third one, and some of them are double, they do two things at once. The third one, it tells your computer how warm your engine is, so it knows whether to give it more fuel for a cold start and to give it exactly the right amount of fuel for cold days or for whatever the temperature of the engine is. So those things can fail too and make you have poor fuel economy or hard starts. You know, your car never wants to start when it's cold, but it always starts great when it's hot. Sometimes a misfire in an engine is called by, caused by a bad spark coil. There can be an internal short or a little crack in the plastic and it's pretty consistent that that cylinder is misfiring or just misfires on damp days. On some vehicles, especially older General Motors, the coil heats up and then it quits running, cools down, then works perfectly another day. <laughs> well, if you have that symptom and they have the single coil because you still have a distributor, just change the coil. So I've given you most of the general information on how to diagnose and tune up your own vehicle. This may save you hundreds of dollars and at least give you peace of mind motoring, especially if a light comes on and you want to pull over and check out your car. So, rock on. <laughs>